Chrysler, Chrysler, Chrysler. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Britain's Hidden History. And me, Ross Broadstock. And here we have a reading again from this amazing book by Wilson and Blackett, published in 1981. It's over 40 years old. King Arthur, King of Glamorgan and Gwent, which why does tells you all about historical King Arthurs, more than one. Um, it also gives an awful lot of his detail about the general history of ancient Britain. And what I'm starting to call, as he says in this book, the heroic age rather than the dark ages, okay? So we're going to talk about here is the three royal clans of Britain. Now, it's important to note, when we talk about three Britain in this instance, as explained in the last video, talk about that shaded area, not including Loigria, not including England in this instance. Loigria does not mean lost lands. It's far more ancient name. Um, so you have Albany, Cornwallis and Britain, the three main areas. So we've got the area in South Wales and the West Country, North Wales and the North of England up to the Clyde and Firth of Forth. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that, okay? So there you are, that's the map, all right? <clears throat> so, the three royal clans of Britain, page 79. The situation existing in Britain from the time of the departure of the Romans in 400 AD. I'll just, I'm going to interrupt very quickly just to say that... Uh, since this book, Wilson and Blackett have changed their position, discovered more and more about Romans' uh, influence being massively exaggerated. So in later books, you'll say that changes a bit. And they also stopped playing along with the terms like Celtic, which at the time they were hoping it would be easier to get some academic acceptance if they didn't throw out the Romans and the Celts with their early books because it was too much of people to handle. They got a load of stick and they couldn't handle it anyway. So in later books, you'll see that uh, changes. But anyway, the, the essence of this doesn't change at all. <clears throat> I'll start again. The three royal clans of Britain. The situation existing in Britain from the time of the departure of the Romans in 400 AD was that there were three great royal clans founded by the holders of the three great offices of Britain. These clans are based one in South Wales and the West Country, two in North Wales and three in the north of England up to the Clyde Estuary and the fifth of fourth. The holders of the three great offices of the Roman state of Britain were appointed by Magnus Maximus when he left, and undoubtedly they were leading members of the British royal families. These men made their title hereditary and quickly translated their offices into kingdom. In South Wales, the ancient lines of kings of Britain tracing themselves back through Arviragus, Bran, and the pre-Roman king still held power. From the fringes of this royal clan emerged Vortigern and later the rightful Arthur II. This family would have held the title of Magister Militum, Commander-in-Chief, the virtual president of the island and also that of Count of the Saxon Shore. This was the role played by Vortigern and his son Vortimer. The second line of kings was of the clan formed by Kineda, or Kineda appointed around 440 to 450 AD the office of Count of Britain, a roving commission to act in any area other than the Northern Wall or the Saxon Shore. Canada drove the Scots-Irish from North, Mid and West Wales. He had nine sons who founded kingdoms and a poet recalls his personal war band as containing 900 horsemen. The third great clan was founded by Coyle or Coyle Hain or Coyle Odibog who filled the role of Duke of Britain in charge of the northern defences of the wall area against the Picts, Scots and Germans. The descents, descendants of these three royal clans form the lines of kings who are faithfully listed in the records of the court pedigrees of Howell Thar, King of South Wales, who died in 950 AD. These records are complete and concise and easily followed. There is and was no gap in British history in the period 400 to 600 AD at any stage. There is no mystery about King Arthur. Even the Mabinogian tales refer to the three armies of Britain. It is in fact possible to construct family tree tables of the lines of the kings of these three royal clans and remarkably the persons shown in these families fit the history, the folklore and the stories of the period with exceptional accuracy. And if you look in this uh, remarkable book you'll see family trees worked out and names and if you were to follow this channel, you see more and more discussion about it. And there will be, uh, a, there's a longer show, a live show every Sunday, 8 o'clock. You can really get into things. And this week it will be from this book. So I hope to see you, or you can see me. I <laughs> hope to join, you can join me on Sunday, 8 o'clock live. And uh, remember, subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Until the next time, from me, Hebuch.